Hey guys, so in this video here we're going to be discussing the bench press. Now, a lot of people, that everyone loves the bench, um, you know, it's, it's one of the favourites, the upper body, um, but not a lot of people know how to execute it effectively, um, and we have a particular standard here, you might consider, like, consider it as powerlifting, benching, but really it's just the right way to bench, specifically um, for shoulder health. So, you know, a lot of people end up getting sh poor shoulders, um, a lot of pain in their shoulders from benching over time, um, and it's because of the five main things. And the first thing um, is foot position on your bench press. Now, you can see my feet here. What I'm basically doing is working out how far back they should be and how close they should be together. Now, what I would advise everyone to do is start with their feet basically just in line straight under the, the bench press. So, as we're setting up, you bring your feet back and you want them almost, depending on your flexibility of like how tight your quads are, you want to bring your feet as far back and as close under your hips as possible. So as you come under, you push your feet down. So I'm pushing my feet down into the floor. I'm causing a tremendous amount of tension in my quads and glutes. And then from there, I can't then go any further down the bench. So when it comes to your foot position, I recommend having a mid stance. So almost, you know, such as just like hip width, width, and try to bring them back as far under your um, uh, hips as possible. Now the reason why we get our feet so far back is we want to be able to push the most weight as possible. And part of pushing is not just the upper body, it's also uh, the lower body. If you think about it, there are much more stronger muscle groups in the legs than they are, there are the upper body, the legs hold us up. So when you're benching, uh, we're gonna go into leg drive later on, but having a, a optimal and effective foot position, we can, we've seen it add you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 kilos onto someone's bench purely because we had their feet in the correct position. So from that there, you wanna have mid width foot stance and try to get them as far under your um, hips as possible, but it's all gonna come down to your personal preference. That's just a position to start. What you're really looking to feel for is just how much force you feel like you can generate from your legs. Um, next one is upper back. So you've always seen people bench like so, with a flat back, and they'll bench with a flat back. This is the number one reason why I find that people uh, get a lot of anterior shoulder pain, because what, what we're looking for is getting our shoulder in a position where it's behind the pec, uh, because it's a much smaller muscle group than the pec itself. So what people end up doing is they end up benching effect, like essentially with their shoulder, with their front delt, and they get all these sorts of impingements and tightness uh, because of that. So what you want to think about with your benching and in your upper back position is once you've got your feet sorted, step one is the feet, so I've got my feet sorted. Now what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to create a curve in my thoracic. So your thoracic is, look at like the base of the neck to halfway down your back. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to flare my ribs. I'm going to push my chest and flare my ribs. Flare my ribs. And then my traps are going to rest on the bench. You can now see that my shoulders are behind my pecs. What this also allows me to do is protect my shoulders and make sure my back is nice and stable. So as I'm benching, I'm keeping my feet pushed down and I'm keeping my chest up, pushing my chest up. So basically one and two is getting you in the position that we need to. We're making sure that your legs are at one end making sure you can't slide down the bench and we're making sure by creating an arch you're not going up the bench but also we're putting you in a position where you can generate the most force safely so think about it as when you drive with your legs you don't just want it to wither away as you're trying to push up likewise as you're pushing up you want to make sure that your um, body is in a strong enough and stable enough position you're, you are structurally um, effective and efficient when moving the weight in the safest way possible and to do that is generating uh, or getting in a position where you can create 
a thoracic extension. That's what it's called, thoracic extension. So step one is foot position. Step two is getting your back in that position, which I just done. Your next step is your grip position. Now, the grip is always gonna be down to you. But what I start with people doing is think about when you wanna punch someone, your wrist is always over your shoulder, uh, elbow, sorry. So wrist is always over shoulder. So that's the position you wanna start with. And then you can move out or move in um, as you wish. So all bars are different. We have a very specific bar here at HQ for you know, lifting heavy weights. But if I were to do so, then so like this finger here would go around the knurling. But I'm not really looking at the knurling. I'm looking at making sure that my joints are stacked. That's when the joints are in the strongest position, when they are stacked. So, so that's my grip position. I get in position. And now what I'm going to do here with my shoulder blades is I'm not just, the way to maintain an arch is to keep your shoulder blades pulled down to your back pockets. Like you do in your squat, you pull and depress your scapulas down towards your back pockets. I'm going to squeeze them in towards my spine. So you can do this while you're watching. Pull your shoulder blades down to your back pockets. Pull them in towards your spine and squeeze them as hard as you can. As you feel that squeeze, you squeeze the bar with your, uh, like your hands. Bring it down. Go back. I'm maintaining that the whole way. I'm not letting my shoulder blades go at all at any point. Squeezing, 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 squeezing. I'm still squeezing. What happens is you know if you're doing it wrong, if you go like this, because now I've lost my arch and my shoulder blades are flared. So get back in position, squeeze, go. And then I rack from there. So that there is one, two, and three. Foot position, back position, and then number three is a two-part up where it's um, grip as well as scapula. Uh, like depression, which you're looking for, maintaining uh, rigidity through the scaps to make sure that your back's nice and strong. Because on the way down the descent, you want your back to take the load, so your lats and your rhomboids and your mid traps, so that the muscles on your anterior, such as your triceps, your front delt, your pecs, can do the pushing. The back is the stabilizer for this. And um, your next one is your breathing. So by now you should know how to breathe correctly, straight into the guts. So. New position. I'm bracing throughout, I'm bracing as hard as I can. And if I ever want to breathe out, I breathe out at the top. But you never perform the rep without your breath. That's when I let my breath go and then retake it. Just like so. Step one, foot position. Step two, upper back. Step three, grip and scapulas. Step four is uh, breathing. And step five is leg drive. So leg drive, very, very important when you're looking to move maximum weight. And also just to make sure that your upper body doesn't fatigue too quickly. So leg drive, all it is, it's my simplest version. You're gonna have to practice this a lot with just a barbell. You come down, everything's tight. And then all I'm gonna do is that's just my legs pushing, generates that little bit of momentum that I can use to push off the body. So what you're doing in there is I'm pushing my foot down and away. So I'm always trying to push my whole body this way, but because I'm laying heavily, I'm laying high, sorry, on my traps, all it's doing is it's pushing me up and it's increasing my extension, but I'm using the momentum I've generated from my legs. I'm trying to throw my body back this way whilst keeping my bum on the bench the whole time. I'm using my feet to push down into the floor, generate force so I can get that little bit of momentum off the chest and drive the bar back. So those are the steps you're looking to take. Step one, foot position. Step two, upper back. Step three, upper back and scaps. Step four is your breathing, and step five is your leg drive. So I'm gonna do five reps now, just to show you what we're gonna be looking for and what you need to be looking for.
you have any questions on this, put them in the comments below um, and we'll go from there. And also get some videos for me so we can really break down your bench. Um, but that is how you will now want to be bench pressing and that is the standard that we have here.